Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back, welcome everybody, Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. I told you before that we celebrate each year the winners of the hackathon. ServiceNow sets up a hackathon every year, it's a great program, and they have sort of two categories. One is the customer category, one is the partner category. Dinah Wang is here, he represents the, the partner category in the hackathon. Dinah, congratulations first of all on winning the hackathon, and welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, I specifically said off camera, I don't know, I, I don't want to know anything about what you did and what the project was all about, but take us to when you started. So I guess it was what, uh, Tuesday afternoon? Yep, yep. Kind of the clock started ticking and you have until midnight when the, the bell rings. Mm -hmm. Start right? shipping in pizza and beer and just Yeah, Coke pizza pockets actually, so. <laughs> pizza pockets. <laughs> <laughs> no coding beforehand. <laughs> nope. Right, that's not cool. Yep. And everybody sort of plays by that rule. You could think about it in the shower, I presume. Oh, we had a vision. We had okay, a vision. so what was that vision? And how big was the team? Uh, so my colleague couldn't join me today. Um, his name is Chase McCray. But okay. So team of two. Team of two. Just so team what of two. was the vision? So I think one of the biggest problems that we've ever encountered with our typical client engagements has been, you know, how can we make the CMS portal look great? You know, when you get the default um, employee self-service portal, it looks very plain Jane. There's not really a lot of pizzazz to it. So I guess when we came into this, we were thinking, you know, what would be the best way to add some visual flair to this? But at the same time, we want to make it user friendly. So we wanted absolutely no code involved. So we wanted to make sure that our end users, our clients can use this application to build beautiful, rich, responsive pages without any knowledge of any code at all. So that was the objective. That was the objective. Okay. Pretty loaded. <laughs> wow. I mean, so we've built responsive websites. Yes, we have. And, uh, and simple websites, which are not yeah, easy but to we, build. We didn't build them in a day. No. <laughs> Seven hours, actually. Seven hours. Seven hours. Seven hours. Okay, so you, that was the sort of the mountain you were trying to climb. Yeah. Okay, and then the clock started ticking, like, literally, what time? Oh, I think it was just shortly after uh, 4 o'clock. So f it's 4 p.m., go. And you got all these yeah. hackathon, you know, want to be winners, yeah. and everybody's coding, stressful situation, so what'd you do? How'd well, you approach Before we get there, what did you think would be your biggest challenge going in, before you actually got in? What did you anticipate? You know, we've been actually browsing a lot on the community forums for ServiceNow, and I guess I've been doing a lot of research on what would be a potential solution for this. So, you know, looking at the forums, there wasn't a lot of progress, you know, doing this type of work, the CMS work, right? So I think the biggest challenge was, is it even feasible? <laughs> is it even possible? That's a good challenge. Yeah. It was a good challenge. Well, yeah. obviously it, it was possible. So how did you attack this problem? So funny enough, the first four hours, we had absolutely nothing working. Zero, zilch. We were pretty much shooting ourselves in the foot at that point. We were just like, uh-oh, what did we do? And then so ah. it wasn't working because your premise was wrong, your code was bad, you were going down a dark alley. What, what, when you say it doesn't work, four hours, that's a lot of, that's a lot of coding. What, yeah. what was going on? What were you trying to do that didn't work? So we learned that, well, we had a lot of help actually from the ServiceNow guys that were coming in. And funny enough, the guys we were following on the community forums, they were there at the event as one of the helpers, right? Right. So we had Nathan Firth and uh, Travis both CMS guys for ServiceNow okay. come in and help us. So they sat down with us, they looked at our code, they were like, you know, this should work. Like, what, what's going on here? And then, did some, a little bit of debugging, and then we had to actually start over from scratch. That's, that's been a theme to, in the show. Starting over on the code again. Four hours in, <laughs> yeah. Four hours in, it was that hour <laughs> contest. Luckily, it was fresh in your mind. <laughs> so we rebuilt it in 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden it worked. You rebuilt, you rebuilt it in the whole 15, thing in 15 minutes, minutes after you were working on a lot of copy hours? and paste, you know, just put it all back in. <laughs> right, right. Four hours down to 15 minutes, yeah. second time through. So what, did it, what, what was the glitch the first time that you, that you worked around? So something new in, in the Fuji release was something called application scopes. Um, we found out that some of the 
I guess the functions or API wasn't available in that particular application scope. So we had to actually go to a global scope, which allowed us to use more, um, the global functions that are available in ServiceNow. And I guess that was the major roadblock there. So take us through how you went at this. So it's the first four hours you spent your time doing what? Just coding out the vision. But what does that mean in terms of was it the layout? Was it the ability to customize the page? Was it the ability to put in you know, custom themes? Um, how'd you make it responsive? Take us through that. So when we originally w were determining like the scope of this whole project, we wanted to, well, at first be able to change themes on the fly. So say you're not satisfied with theme A, you can change it to theme B, theme C, any type, any number of themes that you can download online at any point. And then the other thing too was we want to make it so easy. We want it to be able to just click and drag a control onto a page and there it is. That's all you need. So building that, we were, you know, it was a bit of a struggle, kind of like laying it all out, like what order to attack each each control, right? So right. You know, it was a bit tricky there. Yeah. But you did. I assume I assume you're not the winner for effort. I yeah. assume you uh, <laughs> so, you accomplished the task. So, okay. So and and <laughs> the 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 end game is a portal, yep. so a page, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and so I can envision. I mean, I'm thinking if I'm going to build out a site like that, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to think through the content that I'm going to require. I might mm -hmm. want social content. I might want you know knowledge. I mean, all kinds of things. I mean, it's. Maybe it's not infinite, but there are a lot of different permutations. Mm -hmm. So how do you accommodate all those different data types? So the technology we used actually is called Bootstrap. Yep. So that was the, actually funny enough, presented at yep. the uh, second day of the keynote by Fred Ludi. <laughs> right. So we had some uh, crossover there. <laughs> but pretty much what we built was backwards compatible with all of ServiceNow's existing content management system. So things like knowledge base integration, you know, into that portal page was possible. And you can add the visual flair from our bootstrap integration as well. So you can mix and match and get, you know, the best of both worlds almost. So you essentially have a drag, drag and drop capability. Yes. Um, out of the box now uh, that accesses virtually any data type that's available in the ServiceNow mm -hmm. platform. Pretty much. Bottom line. And all of the major bootstrap components as well. And it's designed for the user then to be able to build their uh, service applications without knowing anything about coding, basically yep. in a drag and drop Pretty much. So I, I had, we, need to demo. We, we do this stuff all the time, right? <laughs> I had a, a, a East Coast based developer tell me that to, to build that capability that you just described was a million dollar project and it might not be able to be done. <laughs> you did it. It's seven hours? Yeah, seven <laughs> hours. <laughs> well, technically, you know. This guy's more pizza. <laughs> <laughs> technically, three hours, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to have service Right now after the four you hours. You have to have a service now platform right. installed to do it. Right. I mean, that yeah. is a precondition, but, you know, which not everybody has, but nonetheless. Um, and so, when the clock struck 12, you were still coding, or were you pretty much done? Or? We, we actually called it a night seven hours in, so. No, the clock wasn't ticking at that point. We were just like, okay, so 11 o'clock at in. night, you're done. Yeah, pretty much. Because how much time did you have in the whole contest? Eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah, eight hours. So Starts you at four ends at midnight. Okay. And then, a team of two. Just a team of two. <laughs> so now, so now, what do you with do a little bit of help from service? See, the now. other guy was supposed to be the mouth, and I was going to be the brain. <laughs> <laughs> with a team of two, with a little bit of help from your friends at service now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's great. So what are you going to do now with the? With the app, is it something that you're going to commercialize, or? Yeah, we were hoping, you know, to bring this to our customers. Like, pretty much at the end of the day, this was built for our customers, because all of our customers asked for the same thing. We want a beautiful, responsive, rich UI experience, and you know, that's pretty much the core essence of service now, right? Everything as a service, and if you think about it, something like user experience, is a core part of a service, right? And what do you think will be the impact? For, I forget the, the expression that Shane just used in terms of the not coder coders. The low code. The low code no developers. Code the no, no code. Code. The no code developers. To have a tool like this in terms of their ability and, and not so much ability, but to, to inspire them to actually begin to build applications inside of ServiceNow. So I think, you know, this is something that people have never seen before in ServiceNow. 
you know, the ability to build pages without any code at all, any any knowledge of, you know, that platform, Bootstrap. You don't need any background knowledge on it. And we made it so simple, like things like an image carousel. It's pretty much a PowerPoint slide. All you have to do is click, upload an image. If you want banner text, you can put it in. You can leave it out. It's up to you. Excellent. Now, tell me a little bit about online business systems. What's that? What's your company all about? So online business systems is a consulting company. Um, it's actually based out of Winnipeg, but uh, we have offices all over um, Canada. So I'm actually from Alberta, Canada. Okay. So. And what types of clients do you serve? What type of industries, roles? So we, well, out west, um, from my home office, we mostly serve the oil and gas industry. Okay. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> right. But we also have a wide variety of clients as well, like um, tax preparers. Um, we have one that's an auto dealership, things like that. And so, also MSPs as well. And so you're seeing this proliferation of applications outside of kind of the classic ServiceNow um, space in terms mm -hmm. of the IT management into all types of things. Yeah. Like what does the car dealership use it for? Car dealership uses it for, um, I guess, pretty much the help desk, but okay. I think a better example would be um, the tax repair where we use it as, actually as like a monitoring tool. We kind of built our own service watch for ServiceNow, so we kind of customized it, tweaked it a little bit, and made it, made it something their own. Now how long have you been working with ServiceNow? So funny enough, I just graduated from university last year. <laughs> so, less wow. than a year at this company, at least. <laughs> you must be so psyched. Yeah. <laughs> a year out, you win the hackathon. <laughs> pretty wired, pretty wired, yeah. So you're That's already awesome. You're already doodling on next year's idea? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm always visualizing. <laughs> and good. your background, what's your background? I'm Chinese. No, oh, well, <laughs> that's great. That, that was beautiful, wasn't it? I'm Italian. <laughs> no, I'm Canadian. I was born as a Canadian. No, so, but I mean, in terms of you, computer science major. Oh, okay. History no. major, right? Computer science. <laughs> you're right. He's a basketball fan, not a hockey fan. So, Sorry yeah, for the you're, Warriors the, you're the one Canadian citizen that's not a not a hockey fan. Hockey fan. <laughs> J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Yeah. <laughs> Get, get things done when the hockey Golden game's State on. Warriors is your Golden team. Golden State. All right. They're going to take it tonight. All right. Good. Well, Donna, first of all, congratulations. Awesome story. Thank and, you. And uh, appreciate you coming on the queue. Thank all you. Right. Good luck going forward. Yeah. Look forward to seeing that in the, in the store. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. Jeff Frick and I to wrap up ServiceNow Knowledge 15. This is the Cube. We'll be right back.